What's up everyone? Welcome back to The Daily Sean. For all of those who have not been here before, my name is Sean and I do a daily video about something related to nursing. No, no rhyme or reason, probably won't change. Today's topic is a follow-up from a previous video on not apologizing when you make a phone call to the doctor in the middle of the night or any time of the day. Do not apologize for doing your job. Hi doctor, sorry for calling. And no, never apologize for doing your job. When you do make the phone call after you don't apologize for doing your job, you need to have your ducks in a row. Ducks? What do ducks have to do with nursing, Sean? I'm not about to go quack quack. Having your shit together, being organized, efficient, proficient, not being the bumbling idiot when you talk to the provider. Decided I thought I'd give you some tips, tricks, and suggestions. Getting your shit together, sorry, or your ducks in a row. The first thing you need to have, confidence. Confidence in your abilities, in your skills. Confidence what you are doing is appropriate. Not cockiness. Second thing, prepare, organize, and anticipate. Prepare organize and anticipate prepare get all the things you need to discuss in one area at your nurse's station computer in the chart in an area of the unit gather your things vital sign labs other pertinent information gather everything that you would need so that when you dial the number get connected you have it all within arm's reach or a click of a button away organize have your thoughts organized the best thing that I can suggest very popular out there is the S bar. I actually like the S bar R, so S B A R R. Go over that in a second. And lastly, anticipate wrenches being thrown into the system. Did 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 and you get a pager and then you dial the pager number and then you sit and you wait. Oh wait, I'm getting another phone call. Oh wait, there's an emergency. Oh wait, call bell. Let me go get and then the phone ring. Or, put in the numbers, you walk away from your paperwork where you have organized everything. When the provider calls back, you're in a patient's room, you don't have any- Oh, um, yeah, um, hang on a second. Yeah, let me call you back. Thus, starting the process over. That scenario there does not invoke a lot of confidence when that provider calls you. No, it's not in your control, but that's the reality of the situation. When a provider calls you, their time is just as valuable as yours. When they call you, yeah, let me go ahead and call you back. Eddie Kit 101. Be prepared for the unexpected. As a nurse, you already do that. S bar. Some people like to use the five W. Who, why, what, when, where. You can use the five W's or you can use the S bar technique. Oh, Sean. More acronyms. Don't oh, we love acronyms? Just another acronym to help you with your thought process. So you can have the five W's, which is the who, what, when, where, why. Or you can have S bar, which is situation, background, assessment, recommendation. I like to add an extra R, situation, background, assessment, recommendation, review. I like to add review and I'll explain why in a minute. But when you make the phone call, you've made the connection, you need to decide before the connection starts how you're going to organize your thoughts, how you're going to organize your sentences when you speak to that provider. You're going to want to go from A to Z and that provider is going to say, wait, 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 what about this? What about that? They're going to have their own agenda and set of questions and you need to be prepared for that. So that's why I talk about the anticipation. You want to put as much detail into your request as possible. When you decide it's time to make that phone call and to contact that provider, have as much detail and as much specificity to the why. After you've decided you know what you're going to say, you use the S-bar technique, you use the five W's, whatever you want to use. Three big things you want to think about when you're on that phone call is first is brevity. You're not there to give a head to toe exam, not there to talk about the psychosocial strains of the family and the patient. While that's important, you are not going to be doing that on the phone. The cousin's brother's sister was saying that yesterday when they were in Minnesota, they were talking about the game and that caused to have some stri- No, not needed during that phone call. Number two, you remain confident in whatever you're doing even if your voice shakes. You remain steadfast in why you called and what you're calling for. Guess what? That provider is going to quiz you, ask you questions. They are not going to take what you are telling them on faith. 
They want evidence to support what and why. Eventually, you and your providers will develop a rapport, will develop a trust together. When my nurses call me and they tell me something, I don't have to question them. But until that happens, your provider is going to question you from A to Z. Why? Why not? Why? Why not? Remember what I said with critical thinking skills. Know the why. Know the why not. This is where it matters. And the last thing, when you're actually on the phone conversation, do not be vague. Do not mill around. Well, I was kind of thinking this. Well, I was kind of hoping this. Uh -uh. Confidence. You're going to request something from them. You're not going to beg for it. Yes, I think we should do this. Yes, because of this and because of that and what you know about this, we should do this. You're either going to be right or wrong. It's a 50-50 chance. And as you become more seasoned in this profession, you're going to be right more than you're wrong. You need to put your cards on the table, give your recommendations. You will be much more respected for giving a false recommendation or an inappropriate recommendation than, well, maybe, I don't know. No, eliminate that. You do not want to be timid, you don't want to be unclear. You've covered all your bases, then you tell them what your recommendations are. And they're either going to agree with you, add to it, subtract to it, or they're going to give you a different recommendation. And you've done nothing wrong because you've spoken for your patient. S bar, the final R is the review. Hugely important. You need to review what that provider has decided to do. At the end of the conversation, did you want to go ahead and place this order? Do you have any additional orders that you would like to give? Okay, so just to review, you want me to give this med this much this time with this specificity. Is this correct? And they're going to say yes, or they're going to say no, 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 no. That's where you save yourself from medical errors. Way back in the day when we had paper charting, you had these things called verbal orders or phone orders. Orders, after you wrote down what the provider wanted, you actually had to verbally repeat back everything. You actually had to sign your initials, read back and verified, RBAV or whatever acronym you were using at the time, but you actually had to write that on the piece of paper that you reviewed and read back the order to that provider. If you did not, the order was invalid. There's a little bit of a weakness when it comes to the ordering system. The CPOE physician order entry has hopefully eliminated that. The physicians and providers are supposed to actually put those orders in themselves instead of giving you a verbal order and then you go and try and transpose it because that's where med errors happen. In the event they're on the phone call and they're being pulled in six directions and they tell you to put that order in, you are going to review with them what they want. And at any time, you do not agree with them, you ask questions. You don't tell them they're wrong. No, 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 no. Bad etiquette. What you do is you ask them, why do you want to do that? Ask for clarification. Always ask for clarification. Never accuse anyone of anything. Down and dirty, quick and easy, how to get your ducks in a row. My final suggestion, if you want to know how to get your ducks in the row, imitate the best and ignore the rest. Don't reinvent the wheel. Don't overthink it. Ask for help. Ask the seasoned nurses how they do it. Mimic them to start with. Then when you develop into your career, when you develop and grow in your profession, you're going to eliminate and add pieces of that puzzle. You're going to want something more. You're going to want something a little less depending on the scenario. Get to cut customize it to your needs. There is no one way of doing this. Have your shit together. S-bar. 5W. Clear. Concise. Confident. Any questions? What'd you think? I want to hear from you. Leave me a comment down below. What do you do to get your ducks in a row? Seasoned nurses. What do you tell your newer nurses? New nurses. What other questions do you have? Always love a thumbs up. Share it with somebody. As always, check your own pulse first.